Oh man, am I ever excited to share the results from a little experiment that I got up to just this morning in sample rate conversion. This is something that I've been wanting to revisit so that I can reconfirm a sort of working theory that I've been rolling on for years. I'm in the middle of mastering a record this week and like a lot of the clients that come to me for mastering, their native sampling format is 48 kilohertz. Ultimately, they're going to a physical CD. So this client requires the mastered album at 44.1 kilohertz so that they can go ahead and import and author their own CD. Now, I've always held a very firm belief that the best results that I get in sample rate conversion is for me to use software to convert the sample rate before I master. This morning's experiment basically just reconfirms it for me. For today's session, I just went ahead and opened up one of my own songs that's in 48 kilohertz format. And I immediately laid the mix back in its native format on a pair of tracks within the same session. On a totally different Pro Tools system, an isolated system, I captured the very same mix at 44.1 kilohertz. So I'm simply laying back the mix in its native format internally inside the session. And then I'm also doing a D to A and A to D conversion on a completely separate Capture Pro Tools system. Well, the very next step is I exported that layback that we did inside the internal session so that I could convert that to a 44.1 file. Yeah, hands down, my favorite sample rate converting software is something called Sample Manager. Unfortunately, it's no longer available, but the good news is they licensed and used Isotope's algorithm to do those sample rate conversions. So there's all kinds of products that you can still access that algorithm, and I highly recommend it. So many times I've literally felt like the end result sounds better than the original after I do the conversion. So Sample Manager lives on my old 2013 iMac, and every time I need access to it, I simply just fire it up and screen share from my main system, process those files to an external drive, and then go ahead and import them to my current system. So when a client requests a sampling format that's different from their native format, every single time, the best results that I get are to create a master session for each sampling frequency using software up front before I master. If they recorded natively at 96 and they want 48 and 44.1, I do all three formats. I create a master mastering session in each of the sampling frequencies. Yeah, it's always been a very logical workflow that if I'm gonna use software to make a sample rate conversion, that I do it before I master. That just makes sense because the waveform is way less complicated than it's gonna be when I'm finished mastering. In my own experience, when I go ahead and master in the native format and then just simply do a sample rate conversion after the fact, I don't get as good of results as if I do that sample rate conversion before I master. So what we see here is the result of me taking each one of those 44.1 kilohertz files, the one that we made in real time and the one that we converted with software, loading them up into the same mastering session and then running each one of them through exactly the same chain and laying it back. So this session is perfect for comparing software versus real-time sample rate conversion. Yeah, I'm not even sure that I can quantify or put into words exactly why I lean towards that software conversion over the real-time process. It's just that pretty much every time I switch back, I feel like that software conversion is a little deeper sounding, a little more clear, a little more detailed, but these two files are so close and this is so subjective. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a zip archive of these two audio files, put them up to Dropbox and share the link in the description of this session. Yeah, these two tracks are so similar that it might be nothing more than psychoacoustics playing into this. I might be picking the software side because my brain wants to. Well, I encourage you to download these two files and load them up in your own DAW, do an AB comparison, and then leave a comment and share your thoughts. Are you hearing any difference between these two tracks? Do you lean either way and why? I sort of hear this little experiment as a real win-win because in the end, if I'm in fact leaning towards the software converted file because it sounds better, well, that's a win. If it's nothing more than psychoacoustics, if there's no difference between these two mixes and it's just my brain playing tricks with me, that's also a win because it 
clearly states that we could use either method. You can use a real-time sample rate conversion, or you can use software and obtain killer results with both methods, right? Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session, and please leave a comment and share your thoughts.